Hello everybody, it's Glass Half Dead here, and today I wanted to do my own version of the Kill Team mission report. Because Warhammer Community, you know, they they stepped up to the plate, but forgot to bring a bat when they did their their last their first in the series of monthly Kill Team articles. This was bad, it sucked. Let's ignore that, and we will instead look at the meta watch that they did for Warhammer 40k. I love this article. I've reread it like three times, uh, and I've looked at the data lots. Um, I really enjoyed this, and I wanted to do something similar for Kill Team. Now, if you don't know, this is just uh, the guys from Warhammer Community um, looking at data that they've received from tournaments that have happened during 9th edition. All they've really done is break down the factions, how present they are in each tournament uh, overall, and then win percentages and the kind of data you can extrapolate from that. I haven't gone as in-depth as they have, but I'm just saying I really like these pictures. So instead I want to look at who's playing what, because that influences which factions I will want to play. You know, I am very much one of those, I want to pick someone, a, a faction that's not played often, because I'm a hipster in that way. Um, I get a little bit of a thrill in taking something that's not good and making it and you know playing it competently enough to be considered good I guess that's something I like and for example for 40k this picture here did wonders for me on that I could see oh okay there's only you know two percent of the field playing this and their win percentage is significantly below everything else that looks really fun I want to play that yes that is how I view these things yes it is terrible <laughs> because there's a reason they're not winning in 40k but there isn't as much of a reason why they're not winning in kill team so i'm only going to be looking at the data here and looking at a few winning lists from tournaments they've already held if you want to talk to people that actually know what they're talking about you want to go over here check facebook commanders international kill team they know what they're talking about i don't so ask questions there but you can find me on there if you scroll down far enough you'll see me insulting tall people that I know short kings unite you know but just before we get into the actual data and the numbers I have to say if you're a subscriber double hello thank you very much damn good on you I like the cut of your jib now how do you get a double hello you're asking just subscribe and in the next video you will get that double hello let's look at numbers so I was handed a bunch of numbers by the people that actually play this tournament um, and much like the the meta watch over here now they went with a nice little pie chart that ain't my style I prefer bars so let's look at a bar chart that's what we're all here for numbers bars bars straight bars let me uh, tell you what these numbers are uh, this comes from obviously the Commanders International pack is very new. It's only been out for, like, out for, I think, a month, maybe three weeks. Uh, but it has been tested before then. And during these tests, which they were essentially the final product, uh, the only reason it wasn't released then is because they had a lot of English to clean up. Um, and, you know, wording, verbiage, etc. The data I'm showing you here is from three tournaments which have occurred. Because, obviously, lockdown, they haven't had many tournaments Definitely not nearly as many as they would like, obviously, when testing a pack. But three tournaments, and I, I think it's either one or two leagues that are currently going. Uh, a league is essentially just a campaign. I don't know exactly what they're doing. I believe it's just, hey, we're playing games, and then whoever wins the most at the end. You know, it's not an actual narrative campaign from, like, the Kill Team Core, where you level up. It's just the pack played again and again over a stretched-out form, uh, so that it's not all done in a day like a regular tournament. So one thing to keep in mind is that this is a very small sample size and also, as well as that, it's going to be a little bit skewed because you're going to have the same player play multiple times in this data set. That actually comes up later. Uh, for example, one of the Astro Militarum players in one of the tournaments comes second and in one of them comes third and it's like, well that's, that's probably a player skill thing, not necessarily Astro Militarum. But anyway, let's have a quick look at some numbers before we get to the top lists of the three tournaments they've had. I'm going to start by saying, unsurprisingly, Adeptus Astartes have the most players. But that is also still surprising to me. I almost, I'm shocked. 
I'm shocked. Why would people play Adeptus Astartes? I mean, to be fair, they are good, I suppose, and they are easy. That's a whole definition I'll get into another, in another video. Hotly followed by Astro Militarum, then Orcs. Interesting to see the Orcs so far up there. Astro Militarum doesn't surprise me. Um, I think Astro Militarum is a really strong team. And I really don't know why they haven't had more of a dominance in kind of more of the Western American meta. Genuinely confused. They're, they're really strong. But anyway, it is what it is. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have zero players in Custodes, Demons, Gelapox, Gene Sealer Cults, Harlequins, Servants of the Abyss, and Crute. Now, obviously, some of those make sense. Uh, Crute, why waste your time? Servants of the Abyss, I suppose... I don't mind Servants. I think they're, f like, uh, as, a, as a faction to run, they've got choices. You have a very varied team. You're only going to run that single team. You, there aren't really options within it. They clearly have best choices. But they are also pretty expensive to get a hold of. So no Servants of the Abyss makes sense. No Crute makes sense. I'm also going to say no, no Custodies makes sense. You know... You're still only a three-man team, I think. You Do you go up to four with the commander? I don't think you do. So you're a three-man team. <sniffs> eh. I'm surprised no demons because demons in Commanders International have a lot more options. Uh, I, I think they're not bad. I think they're definitely a viable faction. Oh, no Gelapox? Eh, yeah, okay. Similar issue with Servants of the Abyss. You can only pick them up in Rogue Trader, so they're limited models. I'm surprised by no Gene Stealer Cults and no Harlequins, though. Especially the Harlequins. I think the Harlequins have a very special place in the game, and I'm really surprised to see them not played at all. So that's very interesting. Then everything else just kind of sits around the middle, with Tau and Tyranids sitting slightly above everything else. But if we look... Thousand Sons, Necrons, Heretic Astartes, Death Guard, and Adeptus Mechanicus all have the same number of players. If I were to reorganise this chart, it would actually look like a pretty acceptable slope. And if I knew how to do like a bell graph thing, it would probably look pretty... yeah. So, the, you know, these all look fine to me. I, I don't think there's anything weird here. The only other thing I'd really say about this particular chart is... Sad there's so few Death Watch. My understanding is obviously Death Watch kind of suck. In Kill Team. Yeah. I don't really have anything to add to that. They just kind of suck. And unfortunately, uh, even though they can take their Watchmaster, who is very expensive and therefore very limiting for your team, you do have the option of Eisenhorn. As, your, as a Psychic Commander, but apparently, from this data, I'm going to assume that hasn't really boosted their stats too much. What can you do? My understanding is that if you want to play Death Watch in Commanders, in, you, you take Eisenhorn, you would never take the Watchmaster. Which is lame, but there we go. Now, moving on, this is the same data. But, you know, the Meta Watch did it in a pie chart, so I wanted to give you guys a pie chart. Isn't this obscure? Doesn't this make it so much harder to see what's happening? Pretty colours though, I guess. Uh, and then, we go over to here. So from the three tournaments that have happened for the Commanders International, uh, I just gave you the numbers here, they're on this side. So Adeptus Mechanicus, Azayani and Astro Militarum have all won one of the tournaments. Heretic Astartes, Astro Militarum and Adeptus Astartes have come second. And Death Guard, Necrons, and Adeptus Sororitas have come third in each of the tournaments. Now, as I was saying, uh, player skill plays a big factor in actual results here. And I know that the Astro Militarum player in both of these is the same person. But luckily, I'm not really giving you win percentages here. I'm just telling you number of people playing the game. Really. Like, factions played. I'm not taking, oh, Adeptus Mechanicus came first in the tournament... Therefore, you must play Adeptus Mechanicus. They are broken. I don't think that's relevant. But you know what? Let's look at that, I guess. So Adeptus Mechanicus, Azayani, and Astro Militarum all came first in one of the tournaments. Astro Militarum have the second highest number of players. So that's actually very underrepresented, especially when you consider that although they came first and second, that was the same player. So really, they only came 
first, essentially, which means what happened to all of the other Astra Militarum players? No clue. Then we've got Admech and Azayani. Now, Admech are sitting quite comfortably in the absolute middle. So one of them coming first is fine. That doesn't seem under or overrepresented to me. There's only one of them in the top three for each of the tournaments. Whereas Azayani are one of the f least played factions and they managed to come first in one of the tournaments, uh, which is, you know, standard Azayani, really. Yeah, that's, that, yeah, they're strong. They are strong and they are still strong. Luckily, we have their roster so we can see how they play it. Okay, let's jump over to the rosters. Woo, okay. This is, this is going to be on stream. This is on stream. Feel free to look at it. Zoom in on that bad boy. I'm not going to read the whole thing out for you. I'm just going to pick out a few highlights that I've noticed. But for all three of these lists, I just, some people often ask, uh, oh, can we see these lists, uh, you know, outside of the video? To which I say no, because I don't have these lists. These are just images I've taken. I cannot give you like a, a proper battle scribe link or anything like that. Now, of course, like you, I'm learning. So let's go through the commanders because those are what I really don't know about. I, I know pretty much what what Astro Minotaur does outside of commanders. So let's take a look. We've got two Lord Commissars and we've got Espern Lucano. For those of you that don't know, Espern Lucano is one of the Blackstone Fortress commander models included in the annual. Um, it's a Psyker. There you go. That's all you need to know, really. Uh, so the Lord Commissar is being run with uh, one as a melee, one as a strategist. Plasma pistol on the melee one. And then the strategist is run bolt pistol power fist. So there's only three points difference. Now, as I said, I don't really know enough about why you would take one over the other. To me, in my crazy ways, to me, in my ignorant ways, I would... I would assume he is taking the strategist significantly more than he's taking the melee Lord Commissar there. In the Commanders International Packet, you need to get kills with your commander sometimes, that's a way of getting VP. But to my mind, I mean, yeah, Plasma Pistol's nice, I guess, but it's short range, you're not really going to be getting shots off with it that often that are reliable. So if you're looking to get kills, you want to be in melee, you've got that Power Fist just for that. That's how you get kills with him and then I don't really feel like a melee specialist is going to give you that much of an advantage over a strategist specialist when it comes to that. Uh, Espen Locarno I assume is there to to dance the dance of psychers. Yeah. The leader is always a regular dude with a las gun. Makes sense I guess. And as always you have Gottfred and Pius Vaughan in there and you have a selection of different Scion gunners depending on how you want to kit them out he's also got some melter guns in there which you don't see too often obviously people typically run plasma but i suppose if you're looking at commanders you are at some point going to go up against things that won't die from plasma shots so you might be willing to take the risk with guardsman ballistic skill to get that one shot with the melter gun sounds dangerous to me i don't like one shot guns but it is what it is Nothing else on there looks particularly weird. I suppose the only thing to note, again, is that he does have a Bulgrin Bonehead on there, who's a veteran with a Brute Shield, more Frag Bombs. Um, obviously, the reason you're able to... F I suspect he takes that in most lists. The reason being that at 200 points with only a 30-point commander, that's like just chucking in a free Terminator. Why wouldn't you do it? We then go over to the Admech. First up, we have a Tech Priest Engine Seer. We know this guy, uh, super cheap, kind of the default for Admech, just because he is so cheap and you could just cram models into the list after that. He does also have Daedalus, sorry, Daedalosus, uh, and Yanis Drake. Again, two Blackstone Fortress commanders there. I don't know too much about them. I know that Daedalosus is good, apparently, I hear. I don't know why. I don't know why Yanis Drake is there over another commander, but he is. And I think with Admech having UR025 on the list at 200 points does make sense. Why not? He is a good model. If you have the points for him, the thing that holds him back in 100 and 125 is you're scrambling for points everywhere so that you can get more models into the list. At 200, suddenly, alongside a 28-point commander, he kind of makes sense. Outside of that, this is just a very standard, I would say, varied admec list. You can pick and pluck, uh, put in whatever you want. Then we have the Azayani list. Now, this is actually quite interesting because 
if you haven't guessed already by now, in the Commanders International Tournament, you have three spots on your roster that are additional to the 20 models for Commanders. So, this guy only has one Commander. That's pretty interesting. This guy is only ever taking a Farseer. This somewhat goes against the idea that if you're going to take a Psyker, just take the cheapest one, who would be a Warlock. I assume he's taking the Farseer so that you get the two Psychic powers in a turn. But he's then spending, I think, another 30 points for that. Uh, or I can't remember how much a Warlock is off the top of my head. But still, that's, that's pretty interesting. I assume... No, I don't assume anything. I don't know what, what he's doing with that, to be honest. I don't know why the Farseer is significantly better compared to a Warlock. I totally understand that there's no Autark option, because an Autark, although he does have very scary, powerful builds, only if you're able to level him up. Uh, so I get that that's not there. But going, yeah, Farseer over Warlock, interesting choice. Should probably find out why. Outside of that, we just have general craft world as a Yarni screwery, 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 screwery. Interestingly, he's gone with the Dire Avenger Exarch as his only leader leader choice. Although that makes sense because I believe you are getting the four up involved with that um, and two wounds because it's an Exarch. It's such a powerful model. You normally don't want it to be be your leader so that you can run it up the board and really get work done with it. This way, you're going to have to play pretty defensively, even though you do have that invuln. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. And then everything else is pretty much what you'd expect. The list does go on over here. As I said, this is very janky. I had to throw this together. I don't have the lists. I just have pictures. Um, he's got some Storm Guardians. He's obviously running Ulthway on everything. Um, he's got Striking Scorpions, three of them, if he wants to drop them in. A bunch of Howling Banshees. He's got Heavy Weapon Platform options. But apart from that... Looks like he's just going X-Arch heavy, mainly. Anyway, everybody, this has been my very quick meta watch, because <laughs> GW won't do it. They don't know what we do, Jesus. Certainly, after looking at these numbers, I'm getting a bit of an idea. Stop me now, boys. Stop me now, but Death Watch. Nobody's playing them. They're not winning. I'm thinking, maybe now's the time. Now's the time, you know? Although I say that, Gene Stealer Colts. Gene Stealer Colts at 200. I could do that. I can see that. Uh, yeah, that's not weird to me. I think GSC, they have a place. They have a place. But anyway, I, I, I shan't. I shan't bog you down with my own thoughts. Um, hey, if you're a commander player, tell me how to win with Death Watch, please. And also tell me why nobody else is winning when I obviously would after you told me how to win with them. Uh, that'd be awesome. But anyway, this has been Glass Half Dead. I hope this has been interesting to you. And if you've made it this far in the video, you know what that means. What am I going to say? It's triple hello. Damn. Damn. I remembered. Good job, me. Honestly, this, this hello economy I'm building here is it's a mountain of cards. It's going to crumble. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. Tell me what your thoughts are on the Commanders International data you've shown here. Obviously, it's very small sample size, and actually something I would like to say is, hey, if you are going to run a CI tournament, please tell me. I would love to know data. I would love to know what everybody's running. Awesome. Anyway, this has been Glass Half Dead. I hope you've had a good day, and continue to have a good day. Goodbye.